Hello everyone, welcome to Botakos IAS Academy, Northeast's premier institute for UPSC, APSC and NPSC preparations. I'm your friend Atre and today I'm here with another segment of Current Affairs 365 dated 30th of September 2021. This is your one-stop solution for any news and updates which will help you prepare for your civil services examination and along with that it is also going to be beneficial for any other Assam State Governor services. So don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook as well as Instagram. The first news of today is about the Prime Minister Portion Scheme. This scheme will replace the existing national program for midday meal in schools or the midday meal scheme. The Union Cabinet has approved the Prime Minister Portion Scheme for providing one hot cooked meal in government and government aided schools. This scheme has been launched for an initial period of five years starting from 2021-22 to 25-26. The midday meal scheme under Ministry of Education is a centrally sponsored scheme which was launched in the year 1995 and it is considered to be the world's largest school meal program which, is, which was aimed to attain the goal of universalization of primary education. Under this scheme, cooked meals were provided to every child within the age group of 6 to 14 years studying in classes 1 to 8 who enrolls and attends the school. Now coming to the PM portion scheme, this scheme will cover 11.8 crore students who are enrolled in classes from 1 to 8 and over 11.2 lakh schools across the country. The primary and upper primary school children are currently entitled to 100 grams and 150 grams of food grains per working day each in order to ensure a minimum of 700 calories. This scheme is going to be extended to students studying in pre-primary or the Bal Vatikas running in government and government aided primary schools. Bal Vatika is the preschool that was started in government schools last year in order to include children aged younger than six years in the formal education system. Along with that, the government will also promote nutritional gardens in schools. These gardens are being provided to offer additional micronutrients to the students. The new scheme has a provision for supplementary nutrition for children in the aspirational districts and those with high prevalence of anemia. The concept of Pithi Bhojan will also be encouraged extensively under this scheme. Pithi Bhojan is a community participation program in which the people provide special food to children on special occasions or festivals. Here, the central government will ensure direct benefit transfer from states to schools, which will use it to cover the cooking costs. This is to ensure no leakages at the level of district administration and other authorities. Moreover, a nutrition expert is to be appointed in each school whose responsibility will be to ensure health aspects such as body mass index, weight, and the hemoglobin levels which are addressed. A social audit of the scheme has also been mandated for each school in each state in order to study the implementation of the scheme which was so far not being done by all the states. The Ministry of Education will also engage college and, school, uh, college and university students in order to monitor the scheme at the local level. Now coming to the fund sharing, Center will bear 54,061 crore of the total estimated cost of rupees 1.3 lakh crore, with the states paying rupees 31,733 crores. Involvement of farmers, producer organizations, and women self help groups in implementation of the scheme will be encouraged. Along with that, use of locally grown traditional food items for a fillet to local economic growth will also be encouraged. However, there are certain challenges which are related to this scheme, which includes meeting the nutrition targets. As per the Global Nutrition Report of 2020, India is among 88 countries that are likely to miss the global nutrition targets by the year 2025. India has also ranked at 94 among 107 countries in the Global Hunger Index of 2020, and India has a level of hunger which is quite serious. Along with that, according to the National Family Health Survey number 5, 
Several states across the country have reversed course and recorded worsening levels of child malnutrition. Other includes other uh, challenges include corrupt practices and caste bias and discrimination in serving food. Moving ahead to the next news, which is related to the airspace map of India, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has launched an airspace map for drone operations, which shows the green, yellow, and red zones across the country. It is going to allow civilian drone operators to check the demarcated no-fly zones or where they need to undergo certain formalities before flying. Now let us have a look at these zones. Green zone is the airspace up to 400 feet that has not been designated as a red or yellow zone and up to 200 feet above the area located between 8 to 12 kilometers from the perimeter of an operational airport. It is to be noted here that no permission is required for operating drones with an all-up weight of up to 500 kilometers within this zone. The second zone is the yellow zone, which is the airspace above 400 feet in a designated green zone and above 200 feet in the area located between 8 to 12 kilometers from the perimeter of an airport. Also, the area above ground in uh, in a position located between 5 to 8 kilometers from the perimeter of an airport will be termed as a yellow zone. It requires permission from the concerned air traffic controls authorities, which could be the Airports Authority of India, Indian Air Force, uh, the Indian Air Force, the Indian Navy, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, etc., as the case may be. And the third zone is the red zone. And it is the no drone zone within which drones can be operated only after a permission from the central government. Now, what are drones? The, uh, the term drone is a layman terminology which is used for unmanned aircraft. There are three subsets of the unmanned aircrafts which includes remotely piloted aircraft, autonomous aircraft and model aircraft. The remotely uh, piloted aircraft, it consists of remote pilot stations required, which requires command and control links and any other components as specified in the type designation. These can be further uh, subdivided into five categories based on their weights and they can be nano, micro, small, medium and large. Drones, they offer tremendous benefits to almost all the sectors of an economy which includes uh, agriculture, mining, surveillance, emergency response, transportation, defense, etc. They can also be significant creators of employment and economic growth due to their reach, versatility and ease of use. The Drone Tools Act of 2021 aims to create a digital sky platform which is a business friendly single window online system with minimum human interference where most of the permissions will be self-generated. And the rules have reduced the red tape involved in the process of seeking compliance, which includes uh, easier process for specification of transfer and pre-registration of the drones to the Digital Sky platform. And the nano and model drones, which are made for mainly research and recreation purposes, they are exempted from type certification. Type certification will only be required when a drone is to be operated in India. Importing and manufacturing drones purely for exports are exempted from the type certification and unique identification number. The next news is regarding a strategy which has been launched by the World Health Organization to defeat meningitis. And this global strategy, which is the first of its kind, has been named as the Global Roadmap to Defeat Meningitis by 2030. Coming to this particular strategy, its goals include eliminate epidemics of bacterial meningitis, reduction in cases of vaccine-preventable bacterial meningitis by up to 50% and deaths by up to 70%. And also the third goal is to reduce disability and improve the quality of life after meningitis of any cause. Main aims of this report is to achieve high immunization coverage, development of new affordable vaccines, and improved prevention strategies and outbreak response. 
It also aims at speedy diagnosis and optimal treatment for the patients and care and support for those affected, focusing on early recognition and improved access to care and support for after effects. Now, what is this disease called meningitis? It is an inflammation of the protective membranes which covers the brain and the spinal cord. It is predominantly caused by bacterial and viral infections, but injuries, cancer, certain drugs and other types of infections can also lead to meningitis. The symptoms include severe headaches, sudden high fever, stiff neck, confusion and difficulty in concentration. Most bacteria that causes meningitis like uh, meningococcus, pneumococcus and haemophilus influenza, these are carried in the human nose and throat. They spread from person to person by respiratory droplets or through throat secretions. Group B streptococcus bacteria is also spread from mother to child around the time of birth. The major impacts uh, includes striking fast with serious health, economic and social consequences, including lifelong disabilities that affects people of all ages in almost all countries. Meningitis, uh, which are caused by bacterial infections, they causes around 2,50,000 deaths per year and it can also lead to fast spreading epidemics. Meningitis epidemics have occurred in the last decade in all regions of the world, but it is most common in the meningitis belt, which spans 26 countries across the sub-Saharan Africa. A range of antibiotics is used to treat meningitis, including penicillin, ampicillin, and ceftriazone. The next news is regarding extension of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor infrastructure project to Afghanistan. China has proposed construction of the Peshawar Kabul motorway as an extension of the CPEC in Afghanistan. The Taliban takeover of Afghanistan and China emerging as a major challenge in the form of the extension of its ambitious CPEC has raised India's economic concerns uh, and as well as political and security related concerns. Now first, what is CPEC? The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is a bilateral project between China and Pakistan. It is intended to promote connectivity across Pakistan with a network of highways, railways and pipelines accompanied by energy, industrial and other infrastructure development projects. This corridor aims to link the western part of China to the Gwadar port in Balochistan, Pakistan via the Punjara Pass in the northern parts of Pakistan. CPEC is a part of the Belt and Road Initiative, which was launched in the, in the year 2013, and it aims to link Southeast Asia, Central Asia, the Gulf region, Africa, and Europe with a network of land and sea routes. India has been severely critical of the CPEC as it passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, which is a disputed territory between India and Pakistan. For the success of CPEC in Afghanistan to, uh, and to a large extent in Pakistan's troublesome territories, it becomes imperative for China to stabilize the security situation in the region first. Improved infrastructure and security situation in Afghanistan can help India to conduct its economic and trade activities in a smoother way. But given the hostility of China, Pakistan and Taliban against India, Afghanistan joining the CPEC will certainly be a strategic disadvantage for India and an advantage for China. So this was all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you all again tomorrow with another segment of Current Affairs 365 only on Vortacus IAS Academy. Northeast Premier Institute for UPSC, APSC and NPSC preparations. Till then, take care, keep learning. Bye-bye. Bhathakur IS Academy. Prostuti Aru Adhyanar Nirbhar Jugyathikana. Bhathakur IS Academy.